Let's bring on the host, Sam, the queen of rock and roll dogs. Hello everyone, I'm Sam, the queen of rock and roll dogs, and you are listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio, a rock and roll show all about pets, people, and pop culture. I'm live from Las Vegas, and today I'm talking about stem cell therapy and other great information. So stay right there, and I will be right back. Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Pets, people, pop culture. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. You're listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio with me, Sam, and I'm your host. I am the queen of rock and roll dogs. And this show is a show that is a little bit different. It is a little bit more rock and roll. So uh, I want to introduce you to my co-host, James Dorigo, my husband. Good morning. How's everybody doing? I'm, I'm hoping they're doing really well. They're all here. It's the weekend. It usually makes people really, really happy. And we've got um, two little monkeys in studio. We always call them monkeys, but they're not. But then people think we have monkeys. Uh, we've got <laughs> Mr. Twix and Miss Thornton in the studio. And Miss Galaxy is in heaven watching down, hoping that we all behave and do, do the job right. Because uh, she, she was the queen of everybody. So she keeps an eye out. I was only a secondary queen, I think. <laughs> uh, talking of queens and talking of princesses, I posted a funny picture yesterday of Thornton um, after we had been vacuuming it up and we st- stocked up, stocked up, stacked up four beds, dog beds, and she was on the top. So it was princess and the peace situation. And uh, it's remained because she really, really likes it. She has a little divot in the middle of the she floor. Does. She does. It's like a little nest. <laughs> she had problems with her peas this morning, though. I couldn't believe it. Oh, she didn't want to eat the peas. She didn't want to eat the... Well, I was eating raw snap peas. And normally we have, you know, sweet peas. You know, with dinner, they love to eat peas. But uh, this morning I had raw snap peas. Yeah, maybe she's just not she, into raw. She was not into raw. <laughs> no, she wants her peas cooked. <laughs> It's both. Well, we're all like that, aren't we? I mean, we don't always like the same foods and we don't always like them prepared in the same way. So I get it. Yeah, very, very picky. Oh, they're so spoiled. Anyway, if you are new oh, to the show, did welcome. Did we ever tell them about the blueberries? Uh, oh, I have to bite them open so that she can smell the inside of the blueberry first? Yeah, she won't eat them whole. Yeah. And so Jim just does what she tells him. <laughs> That's it. If you're new to the show, welcome to the show. Uh, it's great that you're here. We cover everything and everything we possibly can about animals. We started off just talking about dogs, and it's gone beyond dogs. In fact, we're talking about so a rare breed of horse that we're going to talk about later on today that was pretty much extinct. So it's uh, there's so some good news in the show today. It's a very positive show and a show with lots and lots of information. Um, if you are one of our regulars, then we are, are always thrilled that you come back week after week to listen to the show. And we just try and put something together that you can walk away, feel good, learn something, you know, that you maybe weren't aware of. Maybe a great organization that does something for animals or you learn something about training, uh, nutrition, it could be all kinds of stuff, or just crazy, crazy fun stuff, which we have to have a big dose of that, because otherwise, what's the point? <laughs> and if you are that person that throws a birthday party for your pets, then you, you're at the right show. You're listening to the right show, because we go all out for our pets, and we don't think anything is out of the norm. But do you remember when putting a t-shirt on your dog was classed as, wow, that's wild, and now it's kind of normal. Most well, most yeah. people have a little wardrobe for their pets. We had a raincoat, and that was it growing up for our dog. Oh, did you? Well, because, yeah, we got a lot of rain back there, and she had a, she was like Mr. Twix fur, so she'd get stinky, you know. Did, did, now, did I show you that product that Phil was talking about last week? We had Phil Hubba, but not Phil Hubba. <laughs> it's not Phil Hubba. It's Phil Chang of Hubba. On the show, he's a retail expert and specifically in, in pet retail as well. And he talked about a company they're working with, and it's a raincoat, but a raincoat with a. The only way I can describe it, you know what the Sydney Opera House looks like? Yeah. And so it was like that, so you can fall down. Yeah, I remember we talked about it. But yeah, I you know, you know, um, a pram. Oh my gosh, 
what do you call it? It's like a convertible hood on a yeah. baby carriage. So, I mean, it's, it's all well and good wearing a rain jacket, but it doesn't cover their little heads. And so I thought it was a great product. It combined two products together. So wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. But yes, if you're that person, you like to throw a party, you celebrate all their milestones, then this is the show for you. And we've got loads to talk about today. Well, if you are connecting with us right now and you want to know where else we are, because, of course, most people are on more than one social media platform, then here, here's, the, here's the list, here's the rundown. Of course, our main website is VegasRockDog.com. We are about to launch our brand new website. It's been a labor of love. Have you ever done that when you're creating something online and you just hit a little bit of a roadblock and then you just try and stick with it, stick with it, stick with it, and then you get really frustrated? That's what I did last week, and I probably should have walked away from it <laughs> and had a break, <laughs> had a cocktail, because it got me that frustrated. Anyway, we expect to launch the new website. It's very simple, which I'm, I'm simplifying everything in our lives right now. Yeah. I, want, I want to get rid of things. I want to just only have things around me that I really, really like. I mean, for example, we just sold a house in a house in uh, San Antonio, Texas, and we are so happy about that. I can't even tell you. No fun being a landlord, I tell you that much. So we that's gone. I mean we just we're just cleaning out, aren't we, Jim? Yep. That's what we're going to simplify get, our lives. Get you know, what do you need, what do you want? And even to the point of and Jim's not a big fan of it, of ordering uh, even our, our groceries online. Well one I've never liked the grocery store. Well, anyway. I like grocery shopping, so I don't think I'll do that. So we'll give you that chore every week then. Well I have chores for you. <laughs> I know if I do plenty discussing with everybody I do, listening. I do plenty. I do plenty. <laughs> Mm-hmm. But uh, that's another way to simplify. And I think with the way Amazon is going, wow, you'll never need to leave your house. I mean, you can get these two-hour deliveries. It's amazing. Wait till they start doing the parachute delivery, you know, from the from the drones. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm so oh. Uh, what am I going to – I'm not – I don't know. I'm not gonna, <laughs> I can't even speak <laughs> No, now. I can see that. Because you're going to go with all that stuff. Yeah. And I'm going to resist it. I love technology, especially if it makes your life easier. You know, there's lots of technology for pets. There's lots of there's trackers, a little bit like Fitbits for dogs. Yeah, I know uh, that. And I'm sure you can put it on a cat. Not, you know, on, yeah. I don't. Know th- I don't think I've seen them for cats just yet. There's a Fitbit type thing for a horse, but it's more of a, it's more of a, a horse coat, and it can monitor temperature, heart rate, and all manner of stuff like that. So I think that's great because it gives you a better insight into their health, which uh, is a wonderful thing. There's technology you can use if you're away a fair bit. You know, you work long days. You can, uh, you know, the pet can see you on a screen. It can distribute treats. Uh, you've got automatic feeders. I, I mean, of course, it's no substitute for you being there. But if you are a person that works a long day and you don't have someone who can pop in and see see your dog, for example, it's it's another way of connecting with them. So I think it's great. There's lots of monitors you can do. Can you imagine if we put a camera in this house just to watch these two? Oh, I don't even know what they would get up to. You'd see all kinds of action. Uh, uh, the stuff we Shenanigans. see. Shenanigans. The stuff we see while we're maybe most, oh. mostly sleeping interspersed with crazy well, action. Well, the stuff we see while we're here is crazy. So, um, yeah, let's tell you this one story. I think we already told you this the one story about my teacups getting knocked over in the kitchen and me not understanding why Jim wouldn't put them back up. And it wasn't him. <laughs> it was Mr. Twix. Oh, yeah. I got a lot of blame for that. Yeah. Well, who else would it have been, though? I mean, in all honesty, because I thought, how how can any of my dogs get up there? Well, he figured a way out. So we, we knew it was climbing up on furniture, up on a breakfast bar, over and into the sink, and then all the way around. So um, we moved the furniture. Simple solution. Well, the other day, I vacuumed. And I didn't quite push the couch back far enough. I, I mean, literally probably five, six inches off from where it should be. I kid you not. Well, we were watching the Great British Bake Off on TV. I think it was on PBS this week. And they were making a Bakewell tart, which is one of my favorite pastries from England. And Bakewell is one of my favorite places too. And that's one of yours, isn't it, Jim? I love it. And I decided I am going to make a Bakewell tart. So I did. And it was beautiful. Oh, and I photographed it. Thank goodness I photographed it. Because the next time I walked in the kitchen... All the crust was gone. Huh? <laughs> this was gone. And it was perfectly nibbled. <laughs> perfectly nibbled. And I just couldn't believe my eyeballs. I, I just couldn't 
believe that my creation, and it took some creating, I tell you, was destroyed. And so that's how he got up. My fault, because I didn't put the couch back. But he very creatively was eating it. He the selected where. There wasn't where a crumb. Th he didn't leave a cr there wasn't And he crumbs. started on the outside where the crust was exposed. And he worked his way in, yeah. I do make a good crust, by the way. <laughs> he like ni he nibbled the <laughs> radius, the outside he radius. He and <laughs> made a perfect circle around <laughs> the thing. Yes, he did. <laughs> I have a friend who also does that. My friend Pam, we call her Pac-Man Pam. When I make a strawberry galette, and it's the same kind of thing as a strawberry tart with a, <laughs> with a crust. She likes to nibble around the edge of it first. <laughs> I, I'm talking about the whole thing, not just a piece that I give her. <laughs> so I said, "Oh no, I've got two, I've got two Pac-Man in my, two Pac-Man Pac nibblers in my house." Well, anyway, um, I was I was shocked, and it, it was a labor of love. But then I had to then start googling a little bit some of the ingredients to make sure they were not toxic. So there are a lot of um, powdered, not powdered, powdered. What's the word? ground up almonds in the recipe and although they're not toxic they're not great for them you know they can't digest them and i've made a homemade jam in there some sugar and there was a royal icing on the top and he was going to be okay i just had to monitor him and thankfully he did decide to throw up and i was happy about that because <laughs> that was out of his system but oh my gosh so generally if I, if a shoe is chewed if they're on your kitchen counter if they've chewed your favorite bra straps off, it's your fault. <laughs> Take responsibility. Don't it's your fault that we have tons of, sh we have a backyard, <laughs> we look like we have a shoe farm we in do. our backyard. Jim collects them every week, picks them up, and I'm talking to armfuls of shoes. Some I don't care that he has. I really, they become his shoes now. Some I do care. I, my, the shoes I really love are put away, but now. Well, your Disney shoes are out in the backyard. Yeah, but now. he doesn't chew them, he loves them. The reason oh. I call them Disney shoes is they're comfortable shoes that you can wear at Disney without wrecking your feet. Because I, I won't walk around Disney in flip-flops, and I won't walk around Disney in uh, what we call trainers, tennis shoes. Uh, but they're hideous. They're the most hideous shoes you've ever seen, but they're comfortable. So we call them the Disney shoes, and my whole family laughs because we've all got them. Anyway, he doesn't chew those, but there are some shoes that just belong to him now. And that's that. And my nice shoes are put away, except once in a while. Well, now he's figured out how to climb up in the closet now, which is his kind, his new kind of you sleeping. Get your glasses cases now. Oh yeah, he was up on the chair. He, he likes glasses cases. Yeah, he likes the fact that they rattle and when he puts his paw on, they go flying. The plastic cases, he loves that. And they're not lying around. I mean, he's on top of everything. He climbs on top of everything. And yesterday, while you were sleeping, Jim, he tried to jump from one piece of furniture to the other. <laughs> I have it on video, and he's smart enough to know. You could see he's very, uh, he's very, um, he's got, he's got a, quite a will. But you could tell in his brain he was going. I really need to weigh this up. Can I really do this? Or can I safely do? You could tell he was just trying to figure it. And then he got frustrated because he knew he wasn't, he wasn't quite close enough with the furniture. And he got really frustrated. He was like, <laughs> "Well, you jump up there anyway. Come on down." And um, if I think if that that furniture was one inch closer, yeah. He would have done it, yeah. And he has a memory too. He'll he's fantastic. He'll, li he'll leave the item, and and he'll be frustrated. But like an hour later, he'll go, "Oh yeah, that thing's up there again. Let me try." Yeah, to oh get yeah, it. he's got quite the memory now. Thornton, she is a little angel. She's never chewed anything. She's never chewed a thing, has she, Jim? Never has. She's not doesn't fight over anything. Oh, she can she can be a bit if if you know if you're having a bite to eat and you've got your audience, you know your dogs, your audience. And he gets a little bit close to her. He usually sti he usually is a step behind her, like so like he knows. And if she feels he's just a little bit too close to her shoulder because she thinks she's getting the food, she can get a bit like ah. She give him a little tease. Yeah, but and that she's a she's such an easy easy dog, easy peasy. She's well, if you saw her now, wow, she's living the life of Riley. <laughs> Well, that's been our crazy week, <laughs> in a nutshell. Where were we? Yes, we're going to have a brand new website. It'll still be the same address, VegasRockDogRadio.com. You'll see us pop up on Periscope. We, of course, are on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Tumblr, Instagram. Our uh, blog is TheRockAndRollDog.com. Our app is Yap.us, Y-A-P-P.us. 
download the free app, then download Vegas Rock Dog Radio onto the app. It's free. And of course, if you don't catch the show live every week, but we love it when people come on and watch the show live, you can catch us on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spoke, which is brand new uh, from SiriusXM and any other podcast app that you may have on your phone. Just search Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Ah, oh, now there's that. Yeah, it's been quite the week. It's been quite the week. But he did make us laugh last night, didn't he? He's running up and down doing his zoomies. Such a funny dog. I'll post the video. I'll post Hilarious. the video. Hilarious. He goes. It's like a crazy, crazy hour moment. <laughs> the Galaxy used to do that, too. She'd have a certain time of day where she would go nuts. Funny half hour, as we used to, as we sit in England. Like funny something takes hour. him over. Uh, yeah, possessed. Or maybe it was a blueberry she gave her. I don't know. Oh, there's something else. Well, I'll tell you what, let's take a quick break. We're going to come right back. We're going to talk about some rare horses and uh, how they're no longer rare. You'll listen to Vegas Rock Dog Radio with me, Sam, your host, the queen of rock and roll dogs, and we'll be right back. Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Pets. People. Pop culture. At Carl's Jr., not only do we make you happy with our delicious charbroiled burgers, we also make your dogs happy. Come through our drive through with your furry friends and we'll offer them a treat. We love to see their smiling faces. Our website, carlsjunioroflasvegas.com, has a treat in store for its customers too, with free coupons anytime, so visit us often. Carl's Jr. is a proud and active supporter of animal adoption in our community. You can find us at Carl's Jr. of Las Vegas.com. Pet Scene Magazine is dedicated to Las Vegas pets and the people who love them. It's a source of news and information for pet lovers, as well as offering valuable coupons and specials on pet products and services. Find them online at www.lvpetscene.com or look for them on Facebook. Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Pets. People. Pop culture. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio with me, Sam, your host, and my co-host, Jim Dorigo. And we're going to talk about rare wild horses. I love wild horses. Remember when we moved here? We would see wild horses all the time. Yeah. Out at the Red Rock Canyon uh, yeah. recreation area. It's not a good situation. We used to see them all the time. Yeah, it's not a good situation. They've been rounding them up, and it's uh, it's it's a hi- they're the history of Mer- America, those horses. Yeah. They've got bloodlines that go back centuries. Well, little horses and camels were actually part of the development of ancient uh, North America. They were actually native animals. They were little tiny animals. I saw this on TV last week. You did? The they were tiny animals? Camels. They were little camels and little horses oh. that were indigenous. I know a lot of people don't know that camels, people think camels originate in Egypt, don't they? No, they came from North America. Mm-hmm. But uh, what was interesting, you know, there, there's a historical piece with wild horses here in the West, and mostly they came from, you know, the Spanish when the conquistadors came to North America. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and they repopulated, you know, from... From horses that were brought over from Spain, and you know they're amazing to watch in the wild. Oh, f- I mean, gorgeous, yeah. so gorgeous. Else. And it's lovely to see the wild donkeys too. We had wild donkeys out here burros. as well. Burros. Burros. <laughs> burros. Yeah. <or> burros. Golly. Um, <laughs> <it's not laughs> it is lovely, but they've been rounding them up, and it's uh, it's horrible. And sometimes they round them up by helicopter, which is uh, illegal. They're not supposed to round them up by anything they mechanical. Don't, they don't care. They don't care, and it's the hist- and they're not bothering anyone. So you often wonder what is the motive. Well, instead of this. leaving them in the wild to their devices, they round them up and put them in these pens, and then they d- they starve and uh, uh, dehydrate. Well, the thing is, they've survived. They've survived centuries. Think about it. They've survived centuries. Leave them be. And, th- and Mother Nature is the survival of the fittest. I think there's a rancher farmer political piece. I know. I think it's a political piece. <laughs> I mean, that's what I think it is. I don't think it's a rancher piece. I think it's a political piece. We can probably do a little research on that on the break. I, I've been it, it, I've been trying to find uh, a key contact for protecting the Nevada wild horses, and I've I've been unsuccessful to this at this point. 
uh, and I keep trying to just find who this who this person is I can speak to to find out what the heck is going on and how do we bring some awareness to this. Another thing that we actually need to bring awareness to, and we'll do this after the segment on the wild horses, is uh, the horses that are used at the and the donkeys that are used at the Grand Canyon uh, for tourism. And uh, you won't like oh it. Boy, at those pictures bother me. You won't right like it at all. But we're going to talk s- briefly about it after we've talked about this particular thing. And that is that ra- rare wild horses are making a stunning return to Mongolia. The Przewalski horses once roamed Central Asia in abundance. And hunters and the expanding farmland wiped them out. Now, the wild horses were driven to extinction. Extinction. <laughs> Extinction. Gosh. Extinction in ni- the 1960s. It was this in Mongolia? Yes. and um, But there were, f- fortunately, there were some members of the species that survived, and they survived in captivity in Europe. So over the past decade, veterinarian experts have slowly reintroduced the species, species to its age-old habitat in Mongolia. And the Prague Zoo, which I don't know much about the Prague Zoo. I'm not a fan of zoos. I think zoos are rough. It's a, t- it's a, t- it's a tough word. I'll be looking up the Prague Zoo right now. Yeah, if you would. It, I don't believe it. I just don't like animals <laughs> in captivity. But you get an incident, li- incident like this where they bring a rare breed back and then they release them. I have no problem with that. I mean, the awful thing is that no animal should go in extinct, should they, in the first place. And that's, y- I never thought in my lifetime I'd hear, oh, this animal's now extinct. Oh, there's only Well, they shouldn't bees. go extinct because of stuff we do. Yes, I yes. I mean, if they go extinct, they go extinct. Yes. But if we're the if cause, we're the cause of it, it, it kind of sucks. Exactly. Well, the Prague Zoo, they released four of these Przewalski s- horses into the Gobi Desert. And they were the latest group of 27 of the rare horses that they've actually set free. And the, uh, the officials estimate as many as 190 are now back into the wild. And the Przewalski horse, as it leaves its container, they're released into uh, an area where they get to graze, a contained area where they get to graze to get acclimatized to the enclosure first and then eventually they're released out looks like they've done this s- process seven times already this seven. was the seventh time that they did it so that's probably wha- what makes up the 190 that are now back in the wild and i, th- I think that's wonderful if, if you look at them do you know what they remind me of they look like a brown zebra no stripes yeah they look like mules because it looks like they groom their mane yeah they, their manes are trimmed and out the tail ha- just has a little blob of hair on the bottom doesn't it yeah, I'm looking at a horse that was just released from a, a container. Gorgeous. And uh, amazing. But, you know, they trim the mane down. It looks like the hooves are in nice condition and the tail is trimmed out. So, you know, I guess as they get wilder and wilder, that stuff grows and stuff. And Well, yeah, and the thing is, you know, they the hooves will, will keep down because they get to run. They get to be horses. And, yeah, they'll they'll get a lot of exercise through being back into their natural habitat. Incredible, isn't it? Absolutely incredible. Great news. Really great news. As I say, not so great news is if you could look it up, Jim. It's the uh, it's actually on Facebook. This group, um, I would call it. Hmm, I don't know. Search the Grand Canyon horses. Oh, there's a group. For, uh, there's a name for it, an acronym, and I can't remember what it is. But basically, what's happening is you can go to the Grand Canyon, which is actually not too far from us. How, how far of a drive would you say that is, Jim? Well, depends on what part of the Grand Canyon we go. We can take three or four different routes, go to the west rim, the south rim, uh, and get around. But I think the nearest point from us is uh, the south rim would go down to Interstate 40 to Williams, Arizona. So how long does that take? Under Maybe under four hours. Maybe no, it's not bad. It's between not three and four it's like hours. Going to, it's like going to L.A., really. You can fly there on helicopter for, like, nothing. Oh, yeah. They're there in, like, 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. Uh, and part of... of that tourist attraction is that you can get on a horse and you can go down into the bottom of the canyon. Now, here's the problem. They're not treating the horses properly and they're not getting basic water, food, rest, shade. Uh, their hooves are in bad shape. I mean, they've got sores, they're bleeding, and they're exhausted and they are starved, underweight. It's, it's collapsed. It's horrific. 
And so a lot of people who are coming on these tours don't know this until they get there and they're absolutely devastated. Here's a problem. The operation, and I think the lands, is that all tribal land? I believe they run one of the, at least one of those horse. Uh, no, no, the land itself, is that tribal? I think it's a mix of federal and tribal is land, it? depending on what. I, kn I know the, the Hualapais, I believe, have uh, a big tourist operation down there. Who has the, who has the, uh, I the know Skywalk? Uh, I think I think this is a tribe has the Skywalk because didn't they have to do some kind of a blessing on it? Yeah, something like that. Uh, the uh, there's a tribe that actually owns. I th think there's. I think it's only one company, if I'm not wrong, that actually owns it. So, getting onto, you know, a tribal land to go and meet with people who run this business is, is has proved to be incredibly difficult. It's been going on for years, though. Here's the thing. It's been going on for years and years and years. And they've been trying so hard, this particular group, to to tell people what's going on and to try and get some help. Well, it finally hit the news here. So uh, very, very upsetting. If you are coming out to Vegas and you plan on doing one of those trips, please look into the organization well, they're encouraging people just don't do it it's terrible and to show up and just see the condition they're in is horrible i mean and it's hot oh is it hot right now it's so bad and the loaded down with people stuff it's just terrible it's just terrible so do if you found it yet jim yeah it's the have a soup pie uh they, they were uh, were allegations of abuse, I think, that go back to 2016. No, they go back decades. I think that's when they came, when it really came to light, and it's been going on for years. Now, who's the group that's actually fighting them? Uh, I'm still looking. It's kind of hard to find this stuff online right now. It's uh, either it's being uh, controlled or no, it's or not. Uh, I'm looking. I'm looking. I'll let you know when I find a nugget. Jim's not. Jim's. You're not a huge technology person, are you, Jim? I am. I know how to search something. Well, <laughs> you're saying I'm not a huge technology person. Well, you're not. You're trying to say that because I'm slow getting this information. Well, you are slow getting the information. Uh, what did you search anyway? Uh, your search term. I'll, I'll, I'll continue. <laughs> and I'll let you know when I get some information. <laughs> See, I do this all day, every day. That's the thing. I do this all day, every day. So I usually pretty fast on this. Oh my gosh, the name of the group, I want to say it's ARC, I could be completely wrong, lots of organizations use these um, acronyms, don't they, and sometimes some make sense and some make no sense whatsoever, but uh, we'll find out what that is, it's, it's, just, it's just horrible, it's just horrible, but I do, I'd heard that the I found the Channel Eight Las Vegas. Uh, oh, the oh yeah. Article about it. Yes, it, it, it was documented years of this abuse at the Havasu Canyon. W okay, was it George Knapp that that did this? Who did this report? Was it George? Yeah, Knapp? it was yeah. George Knapp, the investigative reporter. Yeah, I like him. He's very good. What else does the article say? I'm just now getting to some of the uh, items in it. But you do hate technology, though, Jim. You're not you're not a huge fan of that. No, I don't hate technology. I like it just, you know, for fun. You if like it for suits fun. me. Oh, <laughs> When it suits me, it's okay. And <laughs> when I have to deal with it, sometimes it frustrates me. <laughs> what is the article? You're being technolo technologically snob snob snobbish. I am because I love technology. But what's the article say? Uh, years of animal abuse documented at Havasu Canyon. Is that it? Mm -hmm. That's not much of an article, is it? Uh, <laughs> Hate to write one sentence. Well, it's it's been kept kind of secretive. You know, people can get there either by, they could hike, backpack, they can take a helicopter, or they can go down uh, to the bottom of the canyon on animals. And uh, there, I found it. It's called the Save Havasupai Horses. That's what it is. And we will have them on the show. We want to try and help them get the word out. The mission of Save. Ah, that's the acronym Save. Stop animal violence with an E at the end. To bring an end to the suffering and mistreatment of animals on the Havasupai Reservation in the Grand Canyon. So this is where it, op it operates and it's on their land. Um, 
Whether this is due to lack of resources, education, or willful disregard, we pledge to do all we can to address these issues. We, be, we believe this will improve the quality of life for all beings there, improve the quality of life uh, for children and for the adults, to all the animals, for, by reducing violence through legal enforcement, compassionate education, and support. Their website is havasupaihorses.org. That's H-A-V-A-S-U-P-A-I horses.org we'll put this link up on facebook as well and they say you know we want to be their voice and that is their their mission uh it is upsetting to see the photographs i know you don't have to go and look at them but if you do want to support this this group uh their plan is actually and i should just check their update right now their plan was to get some um what do they call it billboards on the highway right yeah Public uh, announcements so I people can see it, bring light to it. I love that idea. It's uh, Oh, here we go. Here's the billboard update. Oh, it was yesterday, too. A location has been secured, so clearly I think they got the money. The contract has been signed. Yes, and a graphic artist is working on design. Oh, it just makes me happy when progress happens. We are hoping to have this board up by August the 1st. They're not messing around, and we'll post a photo when it is. A heartfelt thank you to all of those who donated. Because currently now the temps are, are 100 degrees. And this is what the, their last post, and this is this is on the, in Arizona. Uh, all weekend, we would like to remind Havasu Canyon visitors whom have arranged to pack animals to carry br- brunts on their loads that just like us humans, horses and mules are not immune to the extreme heat. If you're considering having an animal carry your belongings in an effort to relieve yourself from the uncomfortable and challenging task, especially in this kind of heat, we would like to know how one goes about justifying that in his or uh, her own head. If carrying your gear for 10 miles in 100 plus temp sounds miserable, why would you put the burden on another living creature? Many of these animals are forced to make the trip more than once a day. And just one trip from the village to the hilltop and back again in uh, at a minimum is 16 miles. Also, take into consideration the fact that many times the pack animals are not provided water and are forced to run the entire higher way to the hilltop so um yeah the pictures are horrible there very upsetting and, you know i guess it really got brought to light last year when that wrangler got uh pled guilty or uh, got the arizona department of agriculture so there you go is, uh, we'll keep him guilty on two of four charges of animal cruelty yeah i bet there's more than that it's funny, you know, it, it's funny. We know of a lot of cruelty cases that happen in town, and, and sometimes there's just, it might, well, the fire, oh my gosh, the puppy store fire, and the owner set the store on fire for an insurance claim with, I want to say it's 25, 30 dogs in there. And they weren't going to put any charges forward for the <laughs> animal endangerment, <laughs> trying to kill them, basically. So. It took a friend of ours to go down and meet and say, no, no, they've got to account for every animal put on there. So sometimes there might be only a cruelty case of, well, you know, they say two two incidents of cruelty. And really, we all know there was probably 20. So, yeah, it's uh, I can guarantee it's a lot more than that. But, you know, some kind of conviction is, is better than not. Did they get a conviction? No. It didn't say here. <sighs> and then you just hope that you have a have a judge that follows the laws that we have in place for animal cruelty and then gives an appropriate sentence. And sometimes that's the big blow at the end when they just don't. And it's very upsetting. And how can you ever how can you ever get a message message out to the public that, no, we won't tolerate people hurting animals if you don't put some senti- good sen- sentences down that are appropriate. But we will keep up to date. I'll, get, I'll try and get them on the show, actually. It's very, very upsetting. And it's very upsetting as a, as a tourist to come out and go, oh my gosh, I paid for cruelty. I've signed up for some cruelty. I mean, that's just horrific, isn't it? Well, yeah, because you fi- you don't know until you get there and you actually see it, and oh. then you're like, oh, now what do we do? Yeah, now what do we do? I'm stuck in the flipping Grand Canyon. Yeah, oh, I, w- I couldn't even. I'd lose my. I'd lose my mind. I'd probably end up getting arrested because <laughs> I couldn't take it. I I can't bear to see anything like that. But we'll keep you abreast of this. I love the idea of the billboard. If you'd like to donate. It's havasupaihorses.org, and it's wonderful. It you know, what's interesting is why don't some of these organizations just fess up and say, you know what, Mm-mm. you know, at this point, yeah, money. this is this has been discovered. This is what we're going to do. We're going to make it right. Nobody goes on a positive uh, campaign to change. They always try to defend 
their status quo. It's because they make lots of money. Oh, it's got I to know be. I they make a lot of money, but you, you know, would still make money though if you. When it becomes the public light and people go, wait, we don't like this, we disagree with this. This is going to hurt your business anyhow. Why don't you just come clean and say, you know what, we've we've uh, gutted our organization. We're going to do this. We're going to make a positive change on our uh, the way we do business. We're going to take care of these animals. No. We'll continue the. We're going to continue to offer that service to the public, but we're going to do that with a new consciousness and a new uh, action plan to take care of the animals. I, I just, I just, I just, I don't. No one does that, though. No, they, they no def- one does. They, well, def- they it's an admission to defend of, themselves. It's an admis- admission of guilt, isn't it, if you decide to change that for a start-off, which a lot of people can't, won't do that. Secondly, they don't really care about animals anyway, so they can just continue. Thirdly, I would say, um, what was it in my head I was going to say there? Uh, won't admit their guilt, don't care about the animals, Oh, I forgot what the thing I was going to say. Y- no, you never see that. You never see that. Here's the prime example. Circus. Barnum. Barnum. No, Ringling. A perfect example of Ringling. Ringling saw the writing on the wall as did everyone else because when that abuse came out and how those animals were trained and how they were transported and how they lived, people did not want to go. They did not want to be a part of that. They saw their sales declining they could have changed their business model. They c- they could have changed their business model without without any admission of that. They could have said, you know what, we are going to go to a modern circus, which is no animals. They exist. They're brilliant. People love them because people love those acts. They love the high wire. They love the trapeze. They they love all. They love the clowns. Well, some people love the clowns. Some don't. But people enjoy that. They could have changed their business model a long time ago. They could have survived. And then people wanted to say, oh, those animal advocates, they they forced them to close. No, they didn't. They chose to close. They didn't actually quite close, though, by the way, because you know they're sending the animals overseas. That's what to go into other circuses. Because they're horrible human beings. I mean, let's think about (laughs) this. They're just horrible. They like the money. But they could have changed their business model, and they could have survived. But they didn't want to. So, you know. That's how that worked. And I just I just think there's so much money involved. They won't admit the guilt. Uh, I never see it. I never see it. I never see that you're right. We've been stuck. We didn't know how to get out of this. Can people help us, you know, go in the right direction? I no. mean, what's it? I mean, we've got dolphins in the desert here, people, at the Mirage Hotel. They still don't have shade. They ever haven't had shade ever. We've ever. never been there in all the years we've lived here. sunburn. Yeah. I'll never step foot in that place. They've n- they've got sunburn. How hard is it to put up a shade structure? It's not hard. But what is it? Oh, well, it's like an admission of guilt that we didn't have any shade for them. Are you kidding me? Horrible. Horrible people. And I said the show is going to have lots of positives. Well, I guess the billboard is a very positive thing. It's a very positive thing. And we'll get the word out to anyone that's trying to come over here to do this kind of tourist attraction. And just so that you know, there's nothing worse than being a part of abuse that you didn't know about, the hidden abuse. Well, I tell you what, let's take another quick break, Jim, because I'll talk about stem cell ther- therapy when we get back. Mm, that's an interesting one. We'll be right back. You're listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Pets. People. Pop culture. Welcome. To Barking Dog Self Wash and Grooming, your one stop shop for all your pets' needs. We offer premium natural pet foods, full service grooming, and an on site bakery and boutique. You can choose to self wash your dog or schedule a luxury pampering with our professional groomers. Visit our cool cat section offering feline food, toys, bedding, and litter, while the adventurous dog department has everything you need for your outdoor activities. And don't forget Cody's Healing Garden, featuring flower, aromatherapy, and herbal remedies for pets. Find us at www.barkingdogslv.com, and we look forward to seeing you in our neighborhood. Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Pets. People. Pop culture. 
Okay, we are moving on to stem cell therapy. Thanks for listening in, everyone. You're listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio. There's four of us in studio today. Myself, Jim Dorigo, Thornton, and Mr. Trex. And they seem rather quiet. They've been out with a very early morning walk. They've had yeah, their breakfast. He was obsessing on his paw and licking it. Yeah. So he, I, I think he wore himself out. I tried to get him away from it, and then uh, now I have the stinky stink breath on my fingers from. That's all right. <laughs> pulling pulling the stinky beard off his stinky could be paws. A, could be a lot worse. <laughs> could be a lot worse. Okay, stem cell therapy gives a sponsor dog called Bambi a new lease of life. And I picked this story up from fr- the forever. <laughs> What's wrong with my? I can't even speak today. Forever Hound Trust in England, and it's a charity dedicated to rescuing and homing greyhounds and lurchers in need. For most dogs, this means a short stay with the charity while they are medically and emotionally assessed to receive any treatment they need and then match with the right home for them. However, occasionally a dog comes along with much more complex needs and the charity needs to continue to be involved in their lives long after they've left the kennels. These dogs are known as sponsor dogs, and they live with experienced volunteers and continue to receive treatment while living in as normal as an environment as possible. And they have a nice website. They do have a nice Fantastic. website. Very professional. It Shelter is here could take a look at this. Oh, tell me. I, uh, yes, their website is so good. It's so fresh. It's up to date. It's really positive. It's got everything you need on the website. Um, so one such uh, one of their sponsor dogs is called Bambi, and that she's a greyhound who lives with Forever Hounds Trust volunteer Julie, and she Julie lives in Gloucestershire. And Bambi has a complicated medical history, and as such, she requires ongoing treatment, which would be costly if it wasn't for the combination of the charity supporting him, it's a boy, and the comprehensive pet insurance taken out to help cover his medical needs. One of the advantages of Bambi's sponsor dog status is that he is surrounded by people who care intensely about his welfare and will do whatever is required to ensure he is safe and comfortable. As a result of this, Bambi has recently undergone a stem cell therapy, a treatment that is relatively new to the UK UK, to help ease pain from a shoulder injury. Now, Bambi's vet diagnosed degenerative changes in his shoulder, which were causing chronic lameness while stem cell therapy is still new the initial results have been very encouraging and there's an increasing body of evidence to support its use therefore it was felt that it would be worth trying to see if it would ease bambi's discomfort and the vet was confident that the treatment would not only ease the lameness in bambi's shoulder but would improve it to such an extent that they would be able to reduce some of the medication that bambi was being given also The adipose-derived stem cell therapy involved Bambi having some cells transplanted into his shoulder. The stem cells were cultured from Bambi's own body, and this regenerative medicine works by stimulating the body's own repair mechanism to to heal damaged tissues by regenerating, replacing, or changing cells. So his own cells are going to repair his own body. Brilliant. It's amazing. Isn't that great? I know that... Cutting edge for the pet world. it's, It's becoming quite... Uh, an accepted treatment here as well, which is great. And stem cells are able to adapt to the environment they're in and become different cells depending on where they are in the body. Gosh, that's amazing. <laughs> now, Bambi's vet, vet is Rachel Mowbray. She's at the Vale Vets and Vale Referrals, and she's been using stem cells for a var- variety of cases, and it has proved successful. And so for Bambi, this is certainly the case, and he's responded very well to treatment and is currently free of pain in his shoulder, Indeed, Julie says the treatment has given him a new lease of life. And this is what I like about these kind of organizations. They do everything they can for these animals that come in. And I'm drawn to those those organizations because they don't see any barriers. They don't see any limitations. They reach out to their network and say, hey, will someone sponsor this dog? Or will everybody donate so that we can give this dog a great life? And this is a perfect example of that. And that is the... Forever Hounds Trust. Now, you will, you've you heard of them before, Jim, and I'll tell you why. Remember Toby? Toby's UK to Spain cycle ride. Oh, that's Toby that I saw on the on the main page. Yes. Yeah. Well, Toby, our pal Toby over in England, is about to embark on 
a cycle, fundraising cycling trip from Britain, from England oh to wow. to Spain. And he is benefiting the Forever Hounds Trust, and he's also benefiting benefiting the Galgos del Sol in Spain as well. So he's helping two organizations. He's got a love for these dogs. He loves greyhounds and lurchers and pedencos, and they all look very similar, and they're gorgeous dogs. And so um, Toby and I guess his sponsor, Fenton Pedals. Do you know them, Jim? No. Okay, you might want no. to look into them since you just got a bike, a new bike. Friends and Pedals and his trusty green bike will set off from Vets for Pets in Chester early on Saturday, July the 30th, two weeks from today. He's been planning this for a long, long time. And you can watch his progress where he's going to cycle approximately 100 miles a day through southern England, France. He's going over the Alps. I mean, this is just unreal. And makes his way through Spain, which will be early August until he reaches Murcia in the southeast of Spain, which is where Galgos del Sol is, yeah? And um, he should arrive there on the 12th of August, and he'll be welcomed by the team at Galgos del Sol and the Galgos Warriors, who will accompany him into the San Javier velodrome to a hero's welcome. Oh, is that not amazing, Jim? That's so cool. And they said, and a strong black coffee at the other end, which he will get. Let me tell you, Spanish coffee, amazing. He's going to be a cortado, I'm sure. And he hopes his endeavor will raise awareness of the Sighthound story and hopefully lots of money for these two charities. And they're very close to his heart. So, again, those charities are the Forever Hound Trust and Galgos del Sol in Spain. So one in England, one in Spain. If you want to donate to help Toby get across <laughs> from one country to the next, uh, and he does have a cycling partner now. Did I tell you that, Jim? No. He got a cycling uh, partner to go with him, yeah. And cool. um, he's, he's got a PayPal set up. He's got a GoFundMe set up. Wow. Now, the, the PayPal is paypal.me slash Toby, T-O-B-Y, UK, number two, Spain. Toby, UK to Spain. His GoFundMe is the same thing. GoFundMe.com slash Toby, UK to Spain. I'll put these links up. You know what I'd love to do? And it all depends on... It all really depends on his cell phone situation, but gosh, if we can get him on the show during a break on the ride, he might be a little tired. I don't. We he might, might be like we might want to sit down and laid talk. out getting a massage or something. Well, he, he, might, he might be maybe, but I'd love to be able to do that to be able wow. to keep continue promoting yeah. his his ride. Isn't it interesting though? You know, when I think about it, you know these. There's some really neat things with these sight hounds and the greyhounds and uh, the galgos and the pedencos in Spain and this in England and even in this country. There's really, really eager and well organized people that help the hound breeds. Oh my gosh, yeah. You know, for example, you know, greyhounds here get free transport anywhere in this country via a vast network of uh, yeah. Of, uh, pe people go. They drive a certain. They won't fly them. They do a certain drive a certain like leg miles legs and, and they connect with the next person the next person the next person it's incredible isn't it really how much people love animals and want to help them and this is this is truly a love for animals to to cycle and go that far and he's funny he's a funny guy so i'm sure he's gonna have some incredible stories to tell on the way but what an adventure i mean that's a yeah, that's cool that's a really an adventure and such that would, that's more fun than a job oh well, yeah <laughs> Way more fun than a job. well i don't know if i was going up a hill uh, over the Alps, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. You have, saw me going around the loop job, of Red Rock. Have a job or climb a hill on a bicycle. You do, uh, you do love a cycling. A bad day though. on a bicycle is better than a good day at a job. Well, yeah. I mean, Jim loves loves cycling, don't you? I'm, oh, well, am I losing my voice? What's going on here? <laughs> you got a frog. <laughs> a frog just showed up. <laughs> and we'll put his links up because, oh, I just have so much admiration for him and the team of people that put this together. And I know he's got people cheering him on all the way. And I can't imagine what that's going to feel like to go cycle into the velodrome out there. Now, Galgos del Sol, Tina, that founded Galgos del Sol, she's British. Her, her kids are incredible athletes and cycling is a big part of what they do mm, cycle run swim the whole thing but i'm talking that they're, they're champions in a team and so they're teenagers yeah, yeah. The, they're they're incredible little athletes so i oh i can't even imagine the feeling of going oh 
wonderful. I'd love to be on the other end of it. In fact, you know what? I might reach out to them and say, please, somebody, Tina, somebody do a Facebook Live when it happens because that's going to be exciting and worth supporting. Well, I've got another nice story. Um, Nick Cave and Iggy Pop. Jim? Nick Cave, like Nick Cage. No, not Nick Cage. Nick Cave and Iggy Pop team up to save the save animals in a touching video. And it's great, basically. They're two of Rock's biggest legends, and they've joined forces for a new video all about protecting animals who need it the most. And the video features a cartoon version of Iggy Pop wearing scarcely more than the animals, of course, because I don't think I've ever seen Iggy Pop wear a top. <laughs> Ever, because he's cool. <laughs> Ever, yeah. And it's set to Nick Cave's Breathless, and its lyrics are more than appropriate for the topic, yeah? Uh, these are some of the lyrics. The, the rabbit hides beneath the ground, for he is defenseless without you. Uh, the sky of daytime dies away, and all the earthly things they stop to play, for we are all breathless without you. Ending on a very, very sweet, sweet image. It's really sweet of Ig Iggy. It, so it goes from cartoon back to real life. A bit like, take on me, take on me. What's the name of the band? Oh, my goodness. One of uh -huh. the best videos ever. It was the first video that that, that was, they went from being real Animation people to, to cartoon. film. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's that kind of thing. So the last scene comes back to real life, and that is... Iggy sat on the sofa with his own dog and um, pats him on the head. And th this clip was made as part of a PETA campaign with the duos, the latest in a long time of musicians and ce celebrities to work with this organization. And if everyone acted like the people our dogs think we are, they said, and depend on us to be, says PETA founder Ingrid Newkirk, the world would be a far kinder place. I do have to agree with her on that, although it's a controversial kind of organization. But I will tell you this. I think their ads, their commercials, and this kind of thing are very good. I think they're excellent. I cannot fault them for that. And so I will put this link up. And in fact, it may have already popped up. Uh, I just love it. I, I mean, you sometimes you just think unlikely character. <laughs> Iggy Pop and just his pants. <laughs> That's so cool. He's so cool. It's very good, though. It's very, very Maybe he good. needs to get together with Brian May and bring the Badgers in. Oh, if you haven't seen that, oh, a couple of years ago, Brian May, big animal advocate. He is, is very much behind stopping the culling of badgers and foxes and those kind of things and fox hunts, but badgers are a big thing. And he did this cartoon... And the badger is him playing a guitar on a spaceship. And it's fan it's just called Badger. Badger, Badger, Badger. Is it a white haired badger or it's black hair when he was younger? It's black and white. Okay. Badgers are black and white. Okay. <laughs> and he plays a rock guitar. It's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic piece of music. And you'll recognize the sounds and everything. Very, very big animal advocate in Britain. Lots of people don't know that. Uh, there are some. I, I do, some people get mad and go, oh, celebrities, you know, just doing things with animals. You know what? Hey, being a celebrity really shines a light on it. So I'm happy they do that. I'm really happy about that. Well, uh, my last piece of information, and I thought this was very, very interesting, and I'm sure it will make a lot of sense when I read this. As you know, we just had July the 4th, so there was tons of fireworks and, and thunder because we had a little bit of, you know, uh, weather going on here and stuff. So, and, and new pets are scared of that stuff for the most part, aren't they? I mean, think about it. We covered how that was what the number one trigger and f uh, for fear, fearful pets, which was thunder itself. But Four Paws University put this out, and it was just a comment that they put, well, it was a long comment, but it's a long comment that they put on their Facebook page. And I thought it was made so much sense. So here we go. This was about, this was about, some of the things, uh, basically the myths that are out there about why animals are frightened and how you should handle it and all that kind of stuff. So they wrote, fear is an emotion and emotions are involuntary responses. Reinforcement, because this is where people say, oh, if you hug your pet when it's thunder, you know, thundering, you are reinforcing the behavior, yeah? So this is what they said. Reinforcement refers to an increase in behavior. Behaviors are voluntary responses. So you've got two different things here. Emotions and behaviors, very, very different. Emotions 
involuntary. They just happen. I'm scared. Whoa, I have a reaction. Yeah. Then behaviors are things we choose to do. Yeah. So fear is something you feel. Behavior is something you do. I have to digest this. I know you do. You do have to think about this. Mm. Fear is something that you feel. Oh, I feel scared. I feel frightened. I feel happy. They're emotions. You feel emotions, yeah? Okay. I'm Behavior I'm is something you do. Oh, I you have bad behavior. <laughs> yeah, I do. I don't care. You have bad <laughs> behavior. <laughs> so here's an example, because you do have to. Th you have to think about this. Here's an example. In the movie Jaws, actors had to appear to be afraid of a mechanical shark. Their eyes widened. They opened their mouths. They screamed, but they weren't experiencing fear. Their brains were not releasing the neurotransmitters and hormones that prepare the body for fight or flight. They were simply acting. Yeah. Dogs, however, are not actors. They do not fake being afraid in order to get attention or get paid, as you say, in treats or an invitation to come on the bed. If they are exhibiting the behaviors associated with the fear, they are feeling afraid. Right. They're not acting. They're, they're not acting. Your dog is scared. Your dog is scared. scared. That's it. And then they said, don't believe me. Feel their chest and check and compare their heart rate to when you know they are relaxed. Dogs can't will their heart to beat faster just to get your attention. And I've heard it. And I've heard it from trainers. Oh, they're just doing it to get attention. Okay. Fear mm. is an involuntary emotional reaction for dogs. It can be triggered by fireworks, thunderstorms, veterinary exams, the behavior of, of, of other dogs. Just because we can't perceive the threat doesn't mean it's not real for the dogs. What about giving treats to a fearful dog? When we pair the presence of a scary stimulus at a reasonable distance, intensity, duration, of course, desensitization is always important with something the dog loves, and we can change the underlying association, yeah? The dog can learn to associate fireworks with frisbee time or, or a vet visit with a hot dog. This is what counter conditioning is all about. So what if your dog doesn't want to take the food? I, I don't think I could tempt Thornton. Oh, she loves food. I don't think I could attempt, attempt her with anything when she's frightened. No. She's like, oh, uh -uh. She's not food I'm scared right now. Scared. No time for food. I'm scared. Yeah. Yep. So. Or when it's time for a W-A-L-K, food doesn't matter because. No, it doesn't matter because that's what she wants to do. So she here zoned in on that behavior. Exactly. So she says, dog's not taking food. Your dog is not ready to work at that level then. Find a way to decrease the distance, the intensity, and the duration of the exposure. So basically remove them if you can. Yeah. Uh, here's another example. You're frightened of spiders. We go to a local football field. While standing at one goal line, a person with a tarantula and a glass case appears at the other goal line. You see the spider. I give you $100. The spider goes away. Now, repeat this multiple times. At some point, when the person with the spider reappears, you will reach out your hand and anticipate a payment <laughs> of the hundred dollars. Yeah, I would. <laughs> I absolutely would. So through this process, they said we can change your emotional response to the presence of spiders, because spiders predict cash. I go, oh, cash. Yeah, that does not make you more afraid of the spider. Okay. So I'm going to refer back to okay. people saying, don't hug your dog when you're scared. It reinforces the behavior. You're still scared of the spider, but you just want cash. Yeah, th exactly. So that's what they're saying is you're, you are not making it worse. Can you contribute to your dog's fear? Absolutely you can in this way. If you don't recognize the signs of fear or you do and you ignore them, which a lot of people do on that bad advice, and force your dog into a sis situation that he's afraid of, you can certainly contribute to their fear. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen people, trainers, take dogs out on patios. And expose them to the thing that's causing them to be fearful. That absolutely terrifies them, and they force them to stay on that patio outside. Yeah, that's common with certain things. Horrible. Like Horrible. So... um. So of you can contribute to that because it's this is like taking a fearful dog to a park to get used to other dogs or picking up and holding a small dog that is afraid of strangers so that strangers can pet him. Yeah. Terrifying. Yeah. Terrifying. Yeah. It's like saying to someone, I'm scared of heights. I'm going to drag you on top of that high bridge mm -hmm. and I'm going to make you stand there. I mean, 
No. Anyway, they said if we try to pet a fearful dog who just wants to leave the situation, holding them still and forcing soothing massage is just adding something unpleasant to an already bad situation. Hmm. You know, you're being forced to stay in yeah. that spot. Yeah. 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 Listen to your dog. And if your dog is leaning against you and seeking your physical contact, then 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 they're probably going to be comforted by being stroked. Yeah. But if your dog is looking away, leaning away, or otherwise trying to escape your well-meaning affection, you're better off just removing him from the situation. Yeah. I'm don't following you now. Don't hold him. This is a, this is Complex. like brain, this is brain teasing. It, it is. It's a my brain has to it, re-engage. It's an exercise in mm-hmm. thinking about emotions and behaviors. So that that tells you right there. If your dog comes up to you, I just want some comfort from you. It will make me feel better. Yeah. If your dog is, please get me away, get me away, then remove them. Don't hold them or hostage. Or if they go hide in a closet, yeah. leave them be. Yeah, if that's their safe little spot, and they say, like, come out, come out, come out, leave them in there. Make them extra comfortable in there, yeah? That, that's where they're trying to find a spot where they feel safer. Um, when we take away opportunities for our dogs to escape or avoid things that they fear, you can make them worse. That's when you do make them worse, when you hold them hostage in a situation that is is terrible for them. Dogs don't get used to scary things through repeated and forced exposure. It's true. I used to be that way at the dentist. (laughs) It didn't mean the more I went, it would get easier. (laughs) It did not. And I had to do something completely different. I had to do something completely different. But what they, they get used to is that we put them in situations where avoidance doesn't work. Let me think about that. When they get used to it, What they get used to is that we put them in situations where avoidance doesn't work, forcing them to protect themselves. When avoidance stops working, aggression is often the only option left. Wow. Yeah, defense. Yeah. Not not really aggression, but defense, isn't it? And yes, this applies to dogs whose fear manifests as aggression behavior just as much for dogs who cower and hide. Fear is the emotion behind the behavior. Yeah? Yeah. Change the emotion and the behavior will change too. If someone tells you that comforting your dog will reward their fear, replace the word fear with another emotion and ask yourself if it still makes sense. For example, giving a dog treats just reinforces his frustration. No. Or petting your dog reinforces his disgust. (laughs) No. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't. Like fear, frustration and disgust are feelings. No one can will themselves to be disgusted if if we could diets would be so much easier (laughs) oh wouldn't they just (laughs) can you teach a dog to be afraid of something of course that she said you know you can create a negative association by pairing a neutral stimulus with an advert with an averse this was first shown in 1920 with the little albert study I do love my science. This is why knowledgeable trainers don't recommend using uh, aversives. Over 100 years of scientific research into learning has shown that you can create negative associations. So unless the form of comfort you give to your dog is aversive, something he wants to escape or avoid, yeah, uh, to your dog, you aren't going to create a negative association. And yet there are those who insist your response will prove to the dog there's something to fear. The only way you can know what the dog is learning, either by association or consequence, is the dog's behavior. Everything else falls in the mind reading category category. <laughs> yeah. So you can only observe you can observe, yeah. While it is a long standing and much repeated belief in the training world, and there are so very many of them, it doesn't hold up to what science tells us about learning and behavior. So here's an update, and this is what they wrote after they posted that. Some people have mistaken this post for a how-to for fearful behavior or that it is suggested as an alternative to counter-conditioning and desensitization. They said this is solely to address one dog training superstition, not a guide for how to help your dog overcome fear. And so where you can learn more about that, though, is you can do, they do a uh, two-hour webinar, Fear and Anxiety, and it's available on demand. You can rent that, and that is uh, Growl's, to it growl snarl snap dot com growl growl gnarls oh hang on you have to stop and reset and take a breath and try growl snarl snap dot com slash on demand 
we'll put that link up there. But I think that was just a great way to get people to, to understand the difference between emotion and behavior and what can cause a problem and what does not cause a pro- problem. Very, very good. I thought it was thorough. Right. Very Excellent, thorough, yeah. but you do have to. It is a, it's a, it's a mind so exercise. It's a, re- it's a read, 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 think again. It, it is. It's something you have to think about and sort out in your brain. And if you're having to do that, then more than likely you may have been reading your, your, your pets wrong in the first place mm-hmm. quite easily. But a uh, very, very good article, and that was by Pause for Pause University. Well, Jill, I do believe we've come to the end of the show. It's very you quick today. Yeah, yeah it's, it's just fast. W- it's just whiz by. Fast. <laughs> <laughs> lots of info, lots of links going up for everyone. If you can get involved in one of these organizations we've talked about today, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. If you're an avid cyclist and you love animals, maybe you are inspired to cycle from one country to the next to raise money for a worthy organization. And maybe you were planning a trip on horseback at the Grand Canyon and were not aware of what's going on there. And you can now not be a part of that. But we'll put all these great links up there. And um, I'm hoping that... um, you know, we see some good progress, particularly with the horses down at the Grand Canyon. Yeah, we'd like to see that improve. I'm very happy about Billboard, and if you've got a few dollars and you want to actually y- um, contribute to getting that message out there, then uh, that would be a wonderful thing. Now, the one thing I did ask on Facebook today, I did ask it rather late, I will admit, though, uh, it was I'd asked anyone if they uh, if their pet was celebrating something special, uh, maybe a birthday, an adoption day, a gotcha day, as some people call it, or passing the good night, good canine <laughs> citizen test. <laughs> I need to go back and learn how to speak English, I'm telling you now. If so, I said, you know, let me know. This is on Facebook. Let me know. And uh, let me know what their name is of your pet. Post a picture, what they're celebrating. I was going to mention it live on the show today. I don't think we had anyone post anything because I think I put it up too late. However, for next week, if you would like a little mention on the show, just write underneath that post and we will share in the celebrations. Well, remember, you can help an animal in need. Either rescue, adopt, donate, volunteer, share their information, donate to a billboard to get the message out, rescue your next family member, replace the word shop with adopt, and be kind to all animals. Thank you, Jim, for being here. Thank you to my two little puppies for just flopping out, looking like two tiny drunks. <laughs> Take a moment to like our Facebook page, follow us on Twitter, and always share your pictures of your pets with us because we love to see their cute, cute faces. And today, you've been listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio, where it's all about pets, people, and pop culture. I'm your host, Sam, the queen of rock and roll dogs. Always kiss your pets good morning and good night, and I'll see you next time you've been listening to vegas rock dog radio pets people pop culture visit vegas rock dog radio for more information find us on facebook twitter and instagram and subscribe on itunes and iheart radio and remember give your fur babies a big kiss from me sam the queen of rock and roll dogs You must not rely on the information in this broadcast from our host as an alternative to medical advice from your veterinarian. If you have any specific questions about a medical matter regarding your pets, you should consult your veterinarian or specialist.